Thank you very much. You know, it's a real thrill to do these shows from New York. This is my home. I was born here. Of course, Gracie was born in San Francisco, and it was really vaudeville that got us together. I'll never forget, I was uh, playing the Gem Theater in San Francisco, and my name then was Smiling Frankie Davis. <laughs> in smart songs and syncopated patter. My opening number was, The birds are sweetly singing and perfume flowers are bringing and the wind is worn as it's passing by. <laughs> by. I love to sing. And after my opening song, I looked out in the audience and I spotted Gracie sitting in the tenth row. This wasn't hard to do. She was the only one left. <laughs> <clears throat> so I leaned over the footlights and I thanked her for staying and she said, now you can do something for me. Help me with my dress. It's caught in the seat. <laughs> I did, and that night we had our first date, and I was short of money, and I went out to see the manager, and I walked into his office, and I says, how do you do? I'm smiling Frankie Davis. How did you like my act? And he punched me right in the mouth. <laughs> From then on, I was known as plain Frankie Davis. <laughs> anyway, three years later, we were married in Cleveland. And um, I'll never forget, after giving the, uh, the uh, justice of the peace $5, I asked Gracie, um, no, I gave him $2. Yeah, that's right, $2. Huh. Still owe Gracie $3 change. <laughs> uh, I asked uh, Gracie where she'd like to spend her honeymoon. And she says, oh, I don't know. Ask my sister Bessie where she'd like to go. <laughs> So I had a talk with her. I explained to her that the honeymoon was more fun if there were just two people. And I convinced her. And she and Bessie wrote me from Niagara Falls every day. <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. I only got one letter. <laughs> now I'd like to take you to Beverly Hills, where Gracie is listening to her favorite afternoon program. How do you do, madam? I'm Mr. Sweeney from the county tax assessor's office. I've come to appraise your furniture. Oh, well, do I have to bring it out or can you come in and look at it? I usually go in and look at it. Oh, good. Come right in. Thank you. And put your hat right here in the hall. It's a very nice house you have here. Oh, thank you. Are you Mrs. Burns? Yes, Mr. Burns is much taller. <laughs> My, that coffee smells good. Oh, would you like a cup? I'd love it. Oh, all right. Oh, please excuse the looks of the house. You know, it's hard to keep it straight. Oh, children do have a way of messing up a house, all right. Oh, we have no children. Oh, excuse me. I suppose you have a cat or a dog. No, if we were going to have anything, we'd have children. <laughs> I wonder if I heard right. I brought you something to go with the coffee. Oh, well, let me and, help you. Oh, oh, thank you. Put it right there on the table. All right, Miss Blanche. Hello? Oh, hello, Blanche. Oh, look, Blanche, I can't talk very long. The tax assessor's here. Hmm? Oh, we'd love to go to the football game. Yeah, well, I'll come over and see you later, Blanche. Goodbye. Oh, do you like football, Mr. Sweeney? I never miss a football game. <laughs> well, you would if you ever went to one. They're wonderful. <laughs> now, I'll, uh, I'll try it. <laughs> as I said, I brought you something to go with the coffee. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered. Oh, it's no bother. <laughs> you serve carnation milk on a silver platter? 
Oh, sure. We serve it on cereal, on strawberries. We serve it on almost anything. Wonderful. Sounds delicious. Well, I can certainly use a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I poured mine first. Excuse me. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> uh, uh, it was perfectly all right for you to have poured yours first. Oh, really? Uh-huh. <laughs> This won't take long, Mrs. Burns. I brought your last year's tax with me. Oh, good. We can certainly use it in times like these when prices are so high. Uh, you don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. I just said to my husband this morning, if they don't do something to cut down the high cost of living, we'll just have to get along without it. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Burns, you're having fun with me. <laughs> Not unless my husband goes along. Uh, how many sugars? Uh, two, please. Uh, I didn't mean that I brought your tax money with me. Oh, what did you do with it? I didn't do anything with it. The county has it. They need it. They have a $2 million deficit. Oh, well, let them, just let them get a cheaper one. I, I, I think I'll be going. Oh, won't you have another cup of coffee? Uh, no, thank you. One was enough. Oh, I certainly admire your willpower. You know, I usually take two or three of a cup of coffee. Uh, Mrs. Burns, I've interviewed a lot of women in my time, but never one like you. Oh. <laughs> I still think you're having fun with me. <laughs> and I still say not unless my husband goes along. <laughs> I know just where that guy is headed, the corner drugstore to get some aspirin. Do you know that that, that druggist has offered to pay our rent if I'd stay in this neighborhood? <laughs> but I'd never move. I love this. Oh, there's the newsboy. Never misses our porch. Except when it rains, then he throws it on the roof. <laughs> George. Oh, that's our next door neighbor, Harry Morton. George. Excuse me. Yes, Harry, what is it? Your paper's here. <laughs> on radio, I could have done this entire bit sitting on a chair. <laughs> but you know, getting back to Harry Morton, he loves football. Two to one, he turns right to the sports section. Bronco Wojciechowski's not going to start tonight, Blanche, and I bet on state. Oh, say, Harry, I forgot to tell you. Uh, George and Gracie are going to the football game with us. Oh, no, not Gracie. What's wrong with Gracie? Have you any idea what poor George takes from her? No, but I bet it's a pretty penny. <laughs> Why don't you stop with that? George could be a success without Gracie. Yeah, uh -huh. like Edgar Bergen without Charlie McCarthy. There's a silly comparison, Blanche. Bergen works with a dummy, and George works... <laughs> okay, you win that point. Anyway, she doesn't know anything about football, Blanche. She couldn't pick the winner if Notre Dame was playing Vassar. This year, who could? <laughs> Besides which, you're not such an expert yourself, you know, Harry. You're forgetting that I played for Flushing A&M. Oh, no, Harry, I remember. Yeah, will you ever forget the big game? <laughs> what a day. 40,000 people in the stands yelling, Give us Speedy. Put in Speedy. We want Speedy. <laughs> so they took you out and put in Speedy. <laughs> well, I wasn't in condition. The night before, I was up until 2 o'clock in the morning waiting for your folks to go to bed. So, so we could neck. They should have put Speedy in then, too. <laughs> very, very funny. Can I read the paper? Go ahead, you mind go if ahead, I, I like go to read ahead. the paper? Come in. It's me, Blanche. Oh, 
in here, Gracie. The taxi sucker didn't stay very long. Oh, hello, Harry. Hello, Gracie. The taxi sucker didn't stay long. No, I saw him when he left your house. He, he, he had a sort of a dazed look on his face. Well, it must be the weather, Blanche. Almost everybody I talk to has that same look. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Oh, say, look at that ad. There's a big sale with bullets. Oh, Harry, do you mind if I cut it out? I want you to, oh, Gracie. Yeah. All right. Oh, I love their linens. They have the most wonderful linens. I wish it was a coat sale. We're going to the football game, and I'm wearing a coat that's five years old. Don't worry about it, Blanche. Nobody will see you. Hmm. Probably won't put you into the third quarter anyway. <laughs> there we are. There we are, Harry. Thanks. Thanks. <sighs> oh, there's a piece of your tablecloth, Blanche. Oh, you use that to cover the hole. <laughs> oh, Blanche, you're very clever. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, don't bother, Blanche. I'll open it on my way out. Oh, thanks, Gracie. Bye. Bye, Gracie. Yes? I beg your pardon. No. <laughs> <laughs> I better see what you want. Yes, dear? Goodbye. <laughs> You know, if I got to make this trip again, Gracie will have to get herself a younger straight man. And now, while I'm catching my breath, I want you to meet a charming girl with a beautiful, beautiful voice, Miss Ellen Hanley. New sun up in a new sky, my whole horizon has reached a new high. Yesterday, my heart sat a blue storm, but today, here at home, I'm cheering you. You dream, saw a new face, a spread of sunshine all over the place. With a new point of view, here's what greets my eye. You love, you love, you son of the sky. Yesterday, things were so gloomy, but today, they I think it's time to put a little plot in the show. And uh, we try to strike a happy medium. We have more plot than a variety show and not as much as a wrestling match. <laughs> so here goes. Music, curtain, and plot. Hello. Hello, may I speak to Bill Goodwin, please? Oh, Bill, this is Gracie. Oh, I'm in such trouble, Bill. Look, I came home from the beauty shop, I drove home, and I noticed a dent in the fender. And if George sees it, he'll never let me drive the car again. And, and, well, I want you to come over and borrow the car from George and have it fixed before he finds out about it. Yes. Oh, well, bring Miss Jones along with you. Oh, oh thank you, Bill. Goodbye. 
Yeah, that's it. That's the plot. <laughs> What'd you expect, Shakespeare? <laughs> I'll tell you something about plot, but don't tell this to Ed Sullivan or Eddie Cantor. It's cheaper than guest stars. <laughs> and another thing about plot, you don't have to worry about billing. George! Oh, here I go again. Pardon me. Yes, Gracie? George, what would you like for dinner? There's some wonderful recipes in this carnation cookbook. Well, anything you fix will be delicious. <laughs> you know, Gracie... I thought of something today that you will never remember. What? I owe you, I still owe you three dollars. No, dear, it's eight dollars. I gave you ten the day we were married. <laughs> <laughs> well, what'd you do today? Well, I went to the beauty shop and I met Clara Bagley. She was going to the doctor's, so I was along with her. Well, that was very nice of you. But the minute I got in the doctor's office, I knew he was no good. You knew he was a bad doctor? Yeah, all his patients were sick. <laughs> <laughs> You're very observing. Yeah, oh, here's a good one. Have you got a pencil? There's a pencil on the back table. All right. He had a beautiful blonde nurse, and even she was sick. She was sick, yeah, too. Yeah, she kept begging him to take out her appendix. The nurse wanted her appendix taken out? Yeah, every time she went into his private office, I could hear her saying, Now, doctor, please cut it out. <laughs> Uh, what was the matter with Clara, that she had to go see a doctor? Well, I think it was to have the dents taken out of her knee. She had dents in her knee? Yes, because every time uh, I looked in the office, he was pounding them out with a little rubber hammer. <laughs> I'll explain that to you later. You got a piece of paper? There's some paper on the, uh, the oh. table there. So while she was in the doctor's office... I was in the waiting room, and I teared up all the patients. I knew that you would. Oh, and wait till I tell you. There was one poor little boy sitting all by himself, and he looked so sad. So I brought him around and made everybody shake hands with him. And that made him feel better. Yeah, well, he almost forgot he had the measles. <laughs> <laughs> Your friendliness was very contagious. Yes, I helped the nurse, too. I answered the phone for him. I see. Someone called up and wanted to know if a man 85 years old could have rickets. Mm. And I said, oh, sure, let him have all he wants, as long as he chews them well. <laughs> you were a real big help down there yes. today. Yes. You got a pencil? Uh, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you. You're liable to forget the book. Uh, oh, and then there was a doctor in the next office whistling. And this, uh, uh, this doctor was whistling? Yes, and the nurse said that that was Dr. Brown, the famous obstetrician. I see. She said that last year he had 260 babies. And I said, well, I'll bet his wife isn't whistling. <laughs> <laughs> what are we having for dinner? Oh, I've got something wonderful. Where do you see it? Right there. Oh, yes. Well, well just write it down. Okay. Just write it down. Now, uh, you answer the, phone, uh, the, the door and let the... Uh, Bill and his girl in. How do you know it's Bill and his girl? Were you expecting them? No, but then my mother wasn't expecting me either, but here I am. <laughs> you see, honey, Gracie dented the fender, so I'm supposed to borrow the car and get it repaired before George finds out. We'll only be here a couple of minutes, okay? Well, Gracie was right. Huh? Nothing. Come on in. Oh, thanks. George, meet Miss Jones. How do you do, Miss Jones? It's nice to see you. Hello, Willie. Hi, George. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you. And Miss Jones, won't you sit down? Well, Willie, what brings you here? Well, George, I won't be here very long, but I'd like to ask a favor. Anything, Willie. Could I borrow your car for a few hours? Well, of course. What, uh, what happened to yours? <clears throat> to mine? Well, I had an accident, a terrible accident, and... This girl might be dying. I've got to get her to a hospital. <laughs> this girl? Yeah. Oh, it was terrible, George. Wasn't it, Miss Jones? Yeah. <laughs> George, yes. we were driving along, see, when all of a sudden this big truck smashed into us head on. Gee, I didn't know what to do. It was awful. Wasn't it, Miss Jones? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our car rolled over. I squeezed out of the window. But there was Snookums pinned yeah. under the car. Snookums? Well, in time of danger, people get very close. Well, naturally, yes. Right, so... Snookums? Yeah. <laughs> I bent down, George. I didn't know whether she was unconscious or not. I still don't. <laughs> I, tri I tried to lift up the car. 
I couldn't do it from this side. Cars were heavy, yeah. yes. So I went to the other the side. The other side, I yeah. tried to lift it from here, George. Mm -hmm. And by exerting all my strength, I lifted this car three feet in the air. And there was Miss Jones. And, and... Hey, look at those carnation recipes there. <laughs> Miss Jones is under the car, Willie. Well, Miss Jones... Listen, if you want to make delicious whipped toppings for puddings, pies, and shortcakes, use undiluted carnation evaporated milk. Carnation is also wonderful for cream sauces, for creaming vegetables. Or you can mix it half and half with water in recipes that call for milk. And the girl is under the car, Bill. Now look, this is the recipe grocers are featuring this week. It's pumpkin pie made with carnation evaporated milk. That's the most delicious pumpkin pie you ever tasted. My mother uses carnation all the time, and she makes the most delicious pumpkin pie. I tell you what we'll do. You come with, we will go, we'll go to my house and have her fix it some, huh? Wait a minute, Bill. What? You forgot the car. Oh, the car. I was down there lifting this car. <laughs> Three feet in the air. Miss Jones was... Drop the car. Drop it. Now, Willie, why don't you go to your mother's, have her fix this pumpkin pie, and tell her to save me a piece? Well, why don't you lend me your car, and I can bring you a piece right away? No car. Well, tell Gracie I'm sorry. Come on, Miss Jones. Wait a minute. Huh? What do you mean? Now, what's Gracie got to do with this? Well, I tell you, you, you just tell her that a certain old creep wouldn't go for it. <laughs> She'll understand. A certain old creep? Mm-hmm. Do I know who this is? <laughs> yeah. Uh, come on, Mr. <laughs> she took Gracie's carnation cookbook. Miss Jones. Miss Jones. Miss Jones. <laughs> yeah. I don't see what Bill sees in that girl. Granted, she's a beautiful girl and has a gorgeous figure. But it must be pretty dull to spend an evening with a girl who says nothing but yeah. <laughs> but I think Bill is a very, very nice boy, and I like Bill. And I like Bill because he like. Oh, the Martins, I gotta let them in, pardon me. Oh, just a second, Glenn. <laughs> Well, thank you, Harry. Sometimes you are a gentleman. Huh? Hello, George. Come on in. Got your coat on? We better ride. Gracie, you better get our coat. The Mortons are here. All right, George. Sit down, Blanche. She takes a little while. I'll take a look. Say, George, yeah. will you do me a favor? Don't make me sit next to Gracie this time like last game. I couldn't even explain the kickoff to her. Well, maybe you didn't explain it right. Well, how would you explain it? Well, the uh, quarterback puts his left end on one side of the field, his right end on the other side, and kicks off. Well, I don't play him. That would kill anybody. <laughs> Gracie, hmm? tonight you're sitting next to George. Oh, George. <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> uh, Blanche, we'll have to borrow your car tonight. You don't mind, do you? Oh, of course not. Oh, oh, oh uh, just a minute, Blanche. I loaned our car to Jim Seward. He's going to Yuma to get married. He is? Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, but he hasn't found it out yet. <laughs> Look, uh, what's, what's all the fuss about? We can use our car. Oh, no, Doug. Uh, you know you let Phil Goodwin have it? Oh, no, I didn't go for that story. Our car is in the garage. <laughs> Come on, let's go, Blanche. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Um, I I've got a wonderful idea. What? Let's walk to the game. Walk? Yes. Five miles? Five miles? Are but, you silly or something? Walking is good for you. It contains vitamins. Well, look at my sister Bessie. Nobody walks like Bessie. Nobody is built like Bessie. <laughs> no. That's the silliest thing I've ever seen in my life. Stop. What? Nobody is going to ride in the car. Why? Because. Because it's dangerous. Why, dangerous? Every, why, sure, every day you, you read about some car hitting a pedestrian. We're going to walk. <laughs> look, Gracie... Are you ashamed of our car because the fender is dented? You know about that? <laughs> I did it this morning. You did it? Yeah, when I backed out of the garage. Well, George Burns, I'm so mad at you, I don't think I'll ever talk to you again. 
Come on, Harry. At the game tonight, I'm going to sit next to you. <laughs> <laughs> George and Gracie will be back in just a second. Mother is a good cook. That was delicious. Well, Gracie and I will be back again in two weeks. And uh, I was just told that we're about uh, 40 or 50 seconds short, and I'd love to do some little thing, but we're not prepared. I am. Uh, <laughs> you see, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very, it's, Mr. Taley it's very hard to time, to time these shows. <laughs> I to can't time these shows unless you know how long you've got to do it. You might but not, Mr. Taley you, came to my you, 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 you might not believe it. Just a little while ago. Did you know that, George, about Mr. Taley coming to my dressing room? Came back just a little while ago with two glasses of champagne. Two glasses of champagne. Two glasses of champagne. Yes, he did. Mr. Taley. Yes. Two glasses. Yes, and he said to me, he said, well, Gracie, here's to your health. Let's drink bottoms up. Well? Well, isn't that kind of an awkward position? <laughs> On the program tonight with Bob Sweeney as the tax assessor and Marilyn Clark as Miss Jones. 